All right, everybody, welcome, welcome. You are with Stephanie and I on the Bringing Healthy Back podcast. We are so excited to have you guys and can't wait to share all the information that we have from you. Today, we are talking about supporting your immune system going into the fall and winter months, specifically with children going back to the school and the classrooms and being around a bunch of germy other kids, which they've always done. So this topic should have been being talked about a long, long time ago, but we are here talking about it now. Um, We are going to be giving you guys things that you can take out and that you need to start eliminating. And then also things that you can add in that we have done with our own families with proven success. So welcome, Stephanie. Hi. So good to be here. I'm so excited. Yes. I'm so excited to dive into this topic. I think it's so important and on so many people's minds right now. So, um, we got a bunch of good information for you. Tons of good stuff. I wanted to first, before we get started, I have to do a shout out and a thank you to your son, Noah. Many (laughs) people, I don't think people, and I never did knew what it went into getting a podcast up and, and organized and edited and all this stuff. And her son, Noah actually does it for us. And so I just want to publicly thank him for all he does for us because we would never, I don't think you and I could ever figure out this technology. (laughs) No, absolutely not. The one time I had to do it, I sat there with him and wrote down every single step and it was 20 of them. (laughs) And I, as I'm writing them, I'm like, how does he know how to do this? So yeah, you are incredible, Noah. Thank you so much for all of your time and all your talents. Yes. Rock star for sure. Um, All right. So let's get started. So the way that this show is going to go, Stephanie and I are going to kind of popcorn back and forth about different things that hurt the immune system, things that you can slowly start to take out. I would highly suggest you get uh, your notes out and start taking notes. We are going to give you a ton of information. Please, please, please don't think you have to start it all tomorrow though. Take a few things that seem realistic to you and for your family and start implementing the different changes slowly. We're in no huge rush. You haven't done it yet. So just take your time and do it in a way that works because the slower that you do it, the more likely that it will stick and stay in your household. So um, we're going to go down the list. So I'll start off the very first thing. And this is not for kids. Obviously, this is more for adults. But honestly, as an adult, you want to stay healthy during this fall and winter too. And so one of the things that really can hurt our immune system is excessive alcohol. Um, so really, I know like we're going into the season of parties and Halloween, and then we have Thanksgiving. Tailgating. <laughs> yes. Oh, tailgating. How do I yeah, forget, forget the that? tailgating? Yeah. <laughs> so like all of these things, and there's so many drinking events. Um, so really just minimizing it, keeping it, maybe you just do it the nights that you're going out with the friends tailgating or going to parties and maybe keep the use of alcohol at home when you're by yourself or just with your family to a minimum, but really getting out the alcohol out of your system is going to help your immune system be stronger um, this coming up year. Absolutely. Um, The next thing is a biggie and it's sugar. Um, I could talk an entire podcast about sugar. Um, There have been studies study after study, um, done on, on the havoc that sugar wreaks on your body, um, your immune system causing inflammation, which is the root of, of almost all diseases. Um, there's been many studies done on, uh, fat and how fat used to be the reason that people would have heart attacks and get sick. And it's, it's found that it's really sugar. Um, sugar is what causes the inflammation. There's sugar in, um, all of our foods, all of these processed foods and, um, you know, giving it to our kids before they head off to school or packing it in their lunches is just not, you, you know, it's not beneficial for them. And in fact, it's harming them. It's harming you. Um, so we're not just talking about eating cookies. We're talking about all the other processed stuff, goldfish. You don't think of that as a sweet food, but, um, it's just laden with sh- sugar and chemicals and, and additives. Um, so cutting out sugar should be on the top of your priority list, write that down. 
reduce yeah. sugar, <laughs> reduce sugar. And I'll tell you, you know, there's 56 different names from sugar for sugar as of right now. So it can be a daunting task, like to sit there in the grocery store and go through the labels right. and see if there's maltodextrin or fructose or dextrose. I mean, there's all these different creative names that they have put in there for sugar. And so it can be overwhelming, but that's honestly why you get yourself a health coach like Stephanie or I, who have already done all this work for you. We already know what a great swap for goldfish is, what a, you know, a swap for a little healthy treat in their lunch. And so this is why you hire a health coach, honestly, is because it takes the guesswork. Otherwise you're going to be in the grocery store forever and it can be done. Like you and I have both done it. Mm -hmm. And we're not saying don't ever have sugar. Like my kids right now are at Mitchell's 24 <laughs> seven. Like, yes. They love their ice cream. Right. But ice cream about, in the summer. Yes. Yeah. It just goes and you know, they're kids, but it's all about reducing. It's like just getting right. that inflammation down as much as possible. And be aware that, um, sorry, <laughs> be aware that just because it says sugar, sugar-free doesn't mean that it's healthy. So I see all these like ketchups being advertised, um, (laughs) um, that say sugar free on them. And then you look at the ingredients and it says sucralose. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just be aware of your labels. Um, the fake sugar is not doing you any good either. That's not, it's, that's not a good swap is to, uh, you know, find the sugar free yogurt and sugar free ketchup and sugar free dressings. They're just adding other junk into it. So please reach out to us if you are looking into finding healthy swaps that really don't have any added sugar because they are out there. Yes, absolutely. Um, The next one, a lot of people don't associate uh, stress when it comes to kids, but guys, let me tell you this year above all years, our poor kids are dealing with stress. And if you don't think that that's true, I really urge you to sit down and have some conversations with your kids be intentional about getting them to talk about what's going on. You know, just a one issue alone that's happening right now is the mask issue. You've got schools that are allowing parental choice. Kids are, some kids are going to school with a mask on other kids are not. There's a social pressure there and it's real, you know, um, talking to your kids about whatever your parental choice is not bullying other kids. If somebody looks different than you, um, you leave them alone. You have respect for their decision and what they're doing. And so I just think um, stress on the bus. You know, I remember when my kids would take the bus, there was so much pressure on the bus and kids would be misbehaving and doing things and bowling. And so there's a lot, and you know, stress with academics, with sports. I mean, you could go on and on and stress causes inflammation in the body. And real fast, just a side note. Inflammation in the body, acute inflammation is really, really good. Like fast, like you cut yourself, you get a lot of inflammation, your body heals, right? Chronic inflammation, when Stephanie and I are talking about inflammation, we mean chronic and stress causes chronic inflammation and that will deplete your immune system. Um, And for us adults too, we really got to figure out de-stressing ways that work for us to kind of lower the stress in our bodies. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, next is deprivation of sleep or, or not getting enough sleep, not getting quality sleep. Um, we need rest. We need good, deep sleep. We need our sleep cycles, the 90 minute sleep cycles. Um, kids need to be going to bed before 10 o'clock, uh, on school nights, especially, um, we had a, we had an issue last night cause today was the first day of school. And, um, my son couldn't sleep. So he went off to his first day of school. And as soon as he's like, I didn't fall asleep until after midnight, I was like, Oh, dagger to the heart. This is terrible. But, um, two hours of deep sleep. Yes. (laughs) You got none. I just know it. Um, yeah. So anyways, um, sleep is vital to their days at school and for their absorption of information and, um, their energy levels and, uh, just everything that has to do with their immunity and keeping them from getting sick. Sleep is huge. You got to make sure that they're getting, um, enough hours for their age, uh, to function at their best and to fight off all of those nasty bugs. Absolutely. There's so much awesome stuff that happens between the hours of 10 and 2 AM. And, and I know it's hard. I've got an 
older teenager and he's my hardest to, to get this, you know, done. But some of the things you can do is like, if they have, you know, an Xbox or video gaming thing in the room, you take their controllers because I don't know if you know this, but they can play offline too. So even if you're shutting the Wi-Fi off, like I do, I figured this out. I was shutting the Wi-Fi <laughs> off right. and I was doing like, <laughs> and they're in there playing. I'm like, how are you playing? The Wi-Fi is off. Oh, you can play offline. I was like, okay. So now we take the controllers. So there's like things you can do to help them fall asleep, you know, diffusing oils, all that good stuff. But sleep is a killer. It, it will really, you know, have uh, harmful effects on the immune system if you're not getting the good night's sleep. Yes. Uh, so that's a great one. Another thing that, um, especially during the summertime, I feel like we get a little bit more lackadaisical. Maybe it's just my house, but when it comes to eating fast food, um, you know, it's out, we're, we're going here, we're going there. Why not just pick up food? Um, normally when we're more home in the winter, it's easier to be cooking meals and doing things. And so, you know, fast food is not only loaded with sugar. I mean, you don't think of a McDonald's hamburger having sugar in it, but it does. It actually has high fructose corn syrup, which is even worse. And, um, so you got to be very cognizant of that there's sugar in there, but also really highly inflammatory oils like canola oil, vegetable oil, oils that will cause inflammation in the body. And what happens when we have inflammation, we have a lower immune system. So really getting back to cooking at home, packing lunches as much as possible versus cafeteria food. That's another source of high sugar processed, high inflammatory oil food. So just kind of figuring out your schedule, even if you have to get up an hour earlier to get their lunches packed, whatever you have to do, that's another way to combat and get rid of the processed food. And I think being prepared is huge because when you're running around with sports and you're like heading out the door to pick someone up, and then all of a sudden you're like, when am I going to make dinner? Cause I have this after, you know, just being prepared and organized, um, can be a big time saver and then guilt saver because, you know, running through McDonald's, I, well, just me personally, <laughs> I would feel guilty giving that stuff. Um, I would almost rather myself or my family not eat, but it happens. So there's going to be some times where you have to run through somewhere. There's unexpected things that come up, but just trying to keep it at a minimum is the big and, and planning out your days and your week um, you know, meal prepping, all of that stuff and taking the extra time to make sure that you're, um, prepared having stuff in the car with you, healthy snacks, whatever that, whatever that means. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. That all helps. Um, the next one, Steph, go ahead. Medications. Um, so, you know, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's another one I could do a whole podcast on. <laughs> medications. <laughs> um, we are, you know, just bombarded with the pharmaceuticals and things that are, you know, offered to us. Doctors put our kids on things. Um, so just, you know, be aware of side effects, be aware of things that, uh, you know, can things that can go on in your body with those medications. Um, you know, a lot of times people want to, doctors want to throw antibiotics at you or, you know, just find out if there's something else that you can do before going on meds, whether it is for yourself or for your kids. Um, you know, all of the over the counter medications, when your kids get sick, um, a lot of that stuff has extra junk in it. So again, you can reach out to us. There's food dyes in some of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, like we always like to say food first, there is a time and a place for medications. We're not saying like, don't ever take any, um, we are not, you know, doctors or functional medicine practitioners. So, um, sometimes they are necessary, but we are highly, highly over-medicated and it is definitely affecting our immune systems. Yeah. Especially with you... antibiotics <clears throat> because yeah. they really disrupt your gut. I mean, really disrupt your gut. And as you'll see later on in here, we talk about a big portion of your immune system is in your gut. And when you have an unhealthy gut, you're going to have a low immune system and be susceptible to getting sick. And it's kind of like this horrible snowball effect that just keeps going. You can't yeah. stop it. So 
Absolutely. Um, the other thing, oh, did you want to say something? I was just going to say with the antibiotic thing, I think a lot of people are like, well, I have this infection. I need to take this antibiotic, but they don't realize I'm killing the bad stuff, but I'm also killing the good stuff. Mm -hmm. So having a good probiotic, um, you know, to come along with it or making sure that you're understanding what's going on in your gut that can affect other areas of your body and your immune system when you're taking that antibiotic. So, yeah. um, you know, that is an important point to know that you're not just killing bad stuff so, uh, and antibiotics are over prescribed. There's times where you don't need to take one. You just don't, your body will fight that infection. Um, and sometimes not. So again, right. I don't want to say don't ever take one. You have to, you know, you have to know what's going on. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Great point. Another thing that really hurts the gut are pesticides and herbicides guys. And, um, this is why we preach organic food because non-organic food is loaded with herbicides and pesticides. Uh, so, you know, this is something that you have to do. I know it's not within everybody's budget, uh, to do everything organic, but really pay attention to the dirty dozen and the clean 15 that EWG puts out. That's a great place to start, start there, getting just those things organic and then slowly start to change over your family. But pesticides and herbicides are a hu huge gut killer. And then that in turn is an immune system suppressor. So watch out for that. So um, I think now we can kind of turn to what to do, things that we've done in our family. Believe it or not, I think we just had a little thing of the vid run through the kids in my house. Um, I, I have full antibodies still, so I did not get sick. Um, my husband didn't get sick, but the kids all had like runny noses, sore throats, you know, they were just dealing with nothing intense and it could have just been a regular cold. Um, I'm going to get them those antibody tests next month to see if they have the antibodies, just to see if they got it. But I figured, okay, let's get into what our protocols are when we start to feel yucky. And within two days, they were all back to normal. So, and I'm not saying that that's typical. That's just with like, as you start to take care of yourself and as you slowly start to change over from having a lot of inflammation in the body to lessening the uh, inflammation, you will notice on your own, your colds are shorter. You don't get sick as much. You have more energy. You have better sleep. Your skin looks better. You feel better. Um, you will start craving healthier foods. Like all of these things start to happen and they're all signs that, oh, I'm lowering the inflammation and I'm increasing my strong immune system. So when Stephanie and I give you these things, there's are things that her and I do within our own family. Every family is different. Yeah, I would definitely consult um, a functional medicine doctor to kind of help you with your deficiencies and what you should do. But these are just things that we've done and they work for us. So um, let's hit it stuff. Okay. So I want to just touch on the immune system and, and what a healthy immune system really is before we give you the nuggets of things that you can do. Um, and I like to use the acronym DIRT. So the D is for detective and defensive. So it identifies the threats and it mounts a response. So, um, it sees what it, what it needs to fight. Like, gosh, this is something foreign I haven't seen before. Let me respond to this and try and, um, figure out how to kill it. Um, the I is for internally regulated. So, um, it is controlled and resolved, um, by your genes and, um, it's called an enzymatic, it's called enzymatic mechanisms or the things that actually fight it within your body. Um, it is restorative. So the R is for restorative, which it repairs the damage that's being caused by whatever is being fought. Um, and the last one is tolerant, um, actively unresponsive or energic to self antigens, micro microbial antigens and food and environment antigens. So you want your immune system to be tolerant. You want it to step up and fight. And a lot of the things that go on in our environment and the foods that we put in our body, um, you know, don't make all of these things possible. So that's what we want to try and help you understand. Also know that, um, 75% of our immune system is in our gut. Say that that's again. Huge. How much? 
75%. That's like almost all of it. <laughs> like so, no um, wonder people are getting so sick because right. most people have very unhealthy guts. Right. We're destroying very. it. Yeah. Destroying. We're destroying yes. it. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, and that, that is a good segue into understanding what makes a healthy gut. So obviously sugar, low sugar diet, gluten can affect your gut. Dairy can affect your gut. Um, so eliminating gluten, dairy, refined sugar is a great place to start. Sounds overwhelming, sounds hard, but both Stephanie and I, we have practice in this. We have real ways to help you and your family slowly get this stuff out of your diet and do it in a way that's realistic. You won't get a ton of pushback at home and it will also start to do it. But guys, you got to remember, this is a process. It's not like, you know, going on an Atkins diet and losing 15 pounds in a week. One, that's so unhealthy. And two, that's just not how the gut responds. Although you will notice really great, awesome changes within the first five days. It's not the total healing. This stuff takes time. And so um, I just want to put that out there that it does take time. And one of the best things that you can do for your body is get a variety of foods, prebiotics, probiotics, and good, healthy phyto phytonutrients. So this is, comes from fruits and vegetables, eating the color of the rainbow. Not only, the, my family does this, we eat the same thing all the time broccoli, asparagus, like Brussels sprouts, um, carrots, like we eat the same thing all the time. And I'm not a very adventurous person when it comes to cooking. You're way more better than this, um, than I am. And I love that. So the variety though, really, really matters in getting nine to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables every single day, obviously more vegetables than fruit when it comes to that. It's very, very hard to do. Um, and so Stephanie and I both have an easy button solution that we use in our family. And I just want to take a little bit of time to talk about juice plus because, you know, it's not just another product juice plus is very different from any supplement. I put that in quotes because <laughs> it's not a supplement, but it, it's different from anything because it's whole real food. Yes. Right. And yeah. So I want to show you guys, this is the bottle of the fruits. You can see over here, we got berries, fruits, veggies, and omegas, which their omegas are the bomb. Um, but if I can show you, hopefully, yeah, Yep. this label, it is a whole food label. It's just like when you buy food at the grocery store, this is not a supplement light label. What's in here are 31 different fruits, vegetables, and berries, which gives you that variety that helps your gut get really healthy. Um, they come in chewables for kids. These are awesome to pack in your kid's lunch. When we talk about like having a sweet treat in their lunch, this is always my kid's sweet treat. They think they're eating gummies, but they're doing something great for their system. And then the capsules are easy to swallow. I always put my capsules in here, take them in the morning. And I know Stephanie, you pour your, uh, capsules into your husband's shake for him to get it in. Right. Yes. Um, it definitely is. Well, you know, because I, I, I do take some, some supplements, some other supplements, um, or I was at least when I was in the process of healing my gut, um, it was, it was easy for me to remember to take them every day. Cause I, I take other things and it, it needed to be a part of my routine. Well, starting to take something when you don't ever take anything anyways, you know, was really hard for him to do. So I just started opening up the capsules and dumping them in his shakes and he gets his juice plus that way. No um, excuses. He, no excuses. <laughs> he didn't, um, didn't even know they were there. He yeah. laughed at me when he heard me tell someone else <laughs> that I was doing that. He was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know. I so love juice plus is eating the rainbow. Like we tell you to do it's, um, bioavailable for your body. Um, you are getting all Can you of explain the what bioavailability means. Some people yeah, so, don't know what that means. So a lot of the over the counter, you know, vitamins that are not researched cannot be absorbed by your body. Um, so that's all that means when it's bioavailable. It's something that your body is absorbing the nutrients out of the thing that you're taking. So um, you could go to the store, a drug store, your local drug store and buy 
vitamin C and you don't really know what's in there and your body's not really absorbing it. And you could, you know, if you were to run your uh, vitamin C level, it would be nothing because it's not really being absorbed by your body. So yeah. And one little tidbit on vitamin C, our body doesn't make vitamin C. So the only way to get vitamin C is through food, which is our first always, always go to food. But if you have a deficiency in vitamin C, or if you just want to keep your vitamin C levels up, uh, liposomal vitamin C is probably the best thing for you to take because it has the best chance of being bioavailable and actually getting into your system. A lot of these uh, kids that are taking these gummy um, vitamins or the parents that are taking vitamins that are not NSF certified, they really are just wasting money. You're peeing out the stuff if it's, if it's not getting, um, available into your gut and getting into your system. So making yeah. sure something is bioavailable is super important. That's what I love about juice. Plus they have omegas that are amazing for brain health. Um, a lot of people think of brain health, like with cognition and concentration and not having brain fog, but there's more to that, especially for children. Um, your brain has to be active, solid working order for even your immune system. Like it's all tied in together. Um, and food dies. Let me get started on that. Uh, that <laughs> we didn't put that in there, but that is like, yeah. you know, gasoline to a fire when it comes to your brain. And these kids are drinking Gatorades and eating Skittles and Ah! Even the vitamin gummies, yes. all of the over the counter vitamin gummies that are, so you think are helping your child's brain and gut and body are it's poison. Yeah. You're poisoning your children and you don't even know you're doing it. I mean, who would do that? Who would knowingly do that? But we are telling you right now, <laughs> you're hearing it from me. Yes. Food dye is poison to the brain. Yes. So that's why we love juice plus there's of course no additives like that in there. Yes. And, um, you're just flooding your child with all the nutrients that they need. Yeah. So, I mean, if you guys are interested in learning more, we can send videos, links, reach out to either whoever sent you this video or Stephanie or I, and we can kind of get you started. Um, on Instagram, I'm swap underscore it underscore healthy and Stephanie on Instagram. What are you? Um, it's just Steph Moniak, S T E P H M O N Y A K. Yeah. Just reach out to us. Um, or like I said, whoever invited you to watch this video and we will get you connected with all the information that you need to learn more about it, but I can't say enough about it. Um, I just got done, um, the other night doing a fantastic talk at this place called live, live wellness here in Ohio city. It's a all the biohacking stuff, like the, they have a red light bed, you know, like back in the day with tanning beds, but this is like a real like red light one where it's actually healthy for you. They've got ozone saunas and cryotherapy. I mean, it's just like, you want to take care of your health. This is where you want to go. So anyway, we did a talk the other night and I had learned, I didn't know this, um, but I learned from them a couple of weeks ago, hydrogen peroxide is actually amazing super cheap. So of course you're not going to hear about it too much. Um, but it is an amazing thing to use during the winter months or all year to help with bacteria and viruses in the respiratory area. So what they do, and a lot of people have nebulizers at home. If not, you can get one on Amazon or wherever. Um, and you take, they, they suggest that you take a, a, a third part of hydrogen peroxide to two thirds parts of clean water and you put it in the little nebulizer and then you breathe it in through your mouth and, and you switch between your nose and your mouth. And that will actually help kill the bacteria and viruses that kids are coming in contact with. You can do it if you're sick, like every two hours um, for about five to 15 minutes. Um, but if you're not sick and you just want to do it, you do it every single day. Just get your kids on their little inhalers, whatever for that I have another friend who, when I was talking to her about this, she's like, well, I actually do like a cotton swab of hydrogen peroxide in my kids' noses every day. I was like, oh my gosh, why did I not know about this? So um, this is a very cheap way uh, to just help with any viruses or bacteria that your kid may be coming in contact with during the school year and super cheap. I mean, so, so cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's talk about vitamin D for a minute because uh, <laughs> only because it's like the most important thing. 
<laughs> for our immunity coming into <laughs> fall and winter. So this is why we have a tendency to get sick in the fall and winter time. We are, there are shorter days, so there's less sunshine altogether, but we're also indoors. We're in school. And then if you live, you know, anywhere that gets cold or gloomy or snowy in the winter time, very, it's very, very minimal vitamin D. Um, vitamin D is huge for keeping you healthy. Um, the sunshine is our first way of getting it, but then of course you can supplement with it and you want to find a supplement that's bioavailable to your gut so that you're actually absorbing it and that your body is able to use it for what it needs it for. So, um, you know, we're in Ohio. So depending on where you are, you can up your vitamin D levels. I just was listening to another health podcast where there was a very well-known um, doctor talking, his name's Dr. Gundry. He keeps his patients vitamin D levels at 100, which if you don't know anything about vitamin D levels, um, a lot of, a lot of doctors, or, you know, if you look at a range or a level, they say like 35 is the lowest. That's actually real. That's too low. That is definitely too low for, for it to be optimal for your health. So that's just that one doctor. I, I do trust this doctor. Um, and 100 seemed really high to me when I heard it. Um, but he basically said, you know, it's hard to overdo it with vitamin D. Um, and his patients that are at a level 100 stay the healthiest. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's get your really, levels there's checked. There's not a huge risk of, of it being too high. Right. I mean, if anything, you're going to play around with vitamin D is pretty safe. Yeah. I will you can't say, really get toxic. It's really difficult to get toxic with vitamin D. So, yeah, but it has so many good benefits that it's, it's worth it. And us too, like I'm always on vitamin D at nice D3. I like, I like to do the D3 with the K, um, mm-hmm. just for better absorption, but then also, always take vitamin D with a fat. It absorbs into your body. So make sure you take it with a meal just so that it absorbs a little bit better. But I love vitamin D. Oh my gosh. Yes. We need to shout that from the rooftops. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, without getting into too much detail, it's been a hot topic. Vitamin D has been a hot topic lately. Um, and there's, there's a reason why there's just study upon study. You can do the research yourself. Um, with people getting sick with people, sorry, with people, um, you know, having less severity of an illness because their vitamin D levels are higher than the people that are getting really sick with really low vitamin D. So amp it up, amp up that vitamin D. It's a big deal. Say like my family, as far as our supplement regimen, we are on juice plus and vitamin D right now. That's it. That's all we take. Now, Same. oh, I do take magnesium, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. And some of my kids do take magnesium, like for other reasons. But so if you, if this is your base, like juice plus vitamin D that's base, what happens when we start to get sick? So I told you guys that I think something went through our house this a little bit ago. And so what did we do? So the following things are the things that I amped up as soon as I start to see the kids are sniffling a little bit things like that. So first one, you still take magnesium on the consistent basis, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So magnesium is great. Um, dosage, definitely talk to a functional medicine doctor. I can tell you, like, if you overdose on magnesium, you're going to probably get diarrhea. That's typically a sign that you've had too much, but magnesium has benefits for sleep. It has it, um, for bowel, like proper bowel movements, um, muscle, cramping my kid that's what my kids take it for with football muscle cramping and soccer what else do what else do you like magnesium for um well i had originally started it for digestion and and bowel movements um but those are definitely the main things i don't really have you know muscle issues but because i work out and get well i guess i shouldn't say that i guess i do i work out and get sore so it is it is great for the muscle relaxation but yeah i think you hit them all Yeah. And it was shown recent over the last year and a half or so to be a cofactor that was needed in recovery and just staying healthy. So 
Um, a bit of magnesium doesn't hurt anybody. And most people are deficient in magnesium. So that's another reason why it's in that list. Um, the next one. Steph. Zinc. Zinc yeah. is a big one. Another personal thing for me, I was low in zinc. Um, well, I was low in zinc and copper. So I take one that's that's together, but that is a, I don't know, you know, a lot of people will load up on zinc once they are, once they get sick, which, you know, that's okay too. But if you can get that level checked to see if you are deficient and then your doctor will supplement you properly. But this is another one, another big one for, for fighting off the little bugs that the foreign bugs that our body need, wants yeah, to attack. These things all kind of work in synergy with each other. So it's not just one of these things. That's why you come up with like a little cocktail that works for you and your family. And it will, it will definitely, you know, work together and help. But alongside that, you can't supplement your way out of a bad diet. So if you are still eating McDonald's and you're still drinking Red Bulls and giving your kids Gatorade, these are not going to do very much. It's collectively like, okay, kid comes home with a sniffle. You got a sore throat, lay down, relax. We're going to be eating clean, drinking water and taking these supplements and just help out your system. But you can't be adding inflammatory stuff and doing this. It's, it's not going to have the same effect. I mean, it'll help, but it's, it's not going to. Um, okay. The next one is I had touched on this earlier. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is like my little, how do I want to say? It? It's the friend I take out only when needed, but then I really use it. So like um, when I start to feel a little bit sick, my thing is, is I like overdose my body on vitamin C and I get a really good night's sleep. And I typically will wake up pretty fine the next morning. Everybody is different, but that's what I do. Um, and always go with the liposomal vitamin C. They, it just digests your, in your system better. A lot of them, vitamin C's are made with, um, crappy ingredients. Yep. And so, you know, just, this is one where you want to use a better quality one to get the best yep. out of it. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be loaded with sugar and taste fruity for it, yeah. <laughs> for it to be most beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> um, sleep. We talk about this probably more than anything. Um, but this is just our, our little snippet of our, you know, time to tell you for things to help to get sleep yourself, your kids. Um, I know that I've heard some other moms say, well, like I, you know, I get my kids put to bed and that's just when I want some me time, which is of course, 100% like relatable and understandable. Um, as long as you're not staying up until two in the morning, getting your me time. Yeah. So whatever that looks like for you, get your me time in after you get your kids to bed. Some people like me fall asleep when they put their kids to bed. <laughs> um, so just whatever that looks like for you, just make sure again, that they're getting their amount of sleep that they need for their age group and that you are getting your eight hours of sleep and deep sleep is key. Absolutely. That's big time between the hours of 10 PM and 2 AM. So super important to get that in there. Um, the, the other one, uh, is stress. We talked about this. It does cause inflammation, which weakens the immune system. So figuring out stress techniques to lower your stress, whatever works for you, for your kids, whether it's journaling, dry brushing, um, meditation, breathing, please don't underestimate the power of breathing. It is amazing. And it really does calm the body down. So anything to kind of help de-stress, and I don't have this one on the list, but I want to throw out there water, right? Let's yes. cheer for the water bottles. Um, you guys got to keep your kids hydrated. I know some school policies last year had where they couldn't have water bottles, which I was like complete BS on because <laughs> these kids have to be drinking water. So just make sure your kids are staying hydrated all day too. That's super important. Absolutely. Yeah. The water bottles are, are huge. I mean, they stop letting the kids use the water fountains. So what other option do they have? They have right. to have their own water bottle. <laughs> <Something good. laughs> um, I wanted to mention really quick, and it's something that I just want to touch on. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty details, um, but you can look up yourself. You could just Google it. Um, the immune systems of farm kids. They found that kids that live on a farm because of them playing in the dirt and being around animals, um, they found that their immune systems were incredible compared to kids that lived in cities and suburbs and things that are, uh, I don't want to throw out brand names, but I will, 
that are Lysol or disinfected and everyone's cleaning every tiny surface every single day or bleaching wait, wait, their wait, house wait. every week. Hold up. Hold up. You mean that germs are better than hand sanitizer? What? News flash. What? News flash. Oh you my You don't want to like load your hands with sanitizer. You don't want to, I mean, obviously when you go to the bathroom, especially number two, you're going to wash your hands. That's not what we're talking about here. We're not saying don't ever do anything. Right. But what I'm saying is that the more exposure you have to dirt and germs, the more your body's going to learn how to fight it. Just like I was talking about the, the dirt acronym. Um, you have to build up that defense so that your body says, I've seen this before. I know how to attack it. I know how to fight it. And if you're, Girl, you're preaching, wiping, preach. if you're constantly wiping those germs away and putting straight alcohol on your hands because you're scared, you're going to get it. And your, your body's not going to learn how to fight that stuff. You are going to get sick more. Yeah. I mean, and girl, that, that stuff kills your immune system. It, it just does. There's yeah. like you said, a time and place for it. Yeah. But don't be afraid of germs. They're okay. Yes. Let them play in the dirt. Yes. Them, you know, just, it just, it's a part of life and, and it's what helped everyone so long ago, not, you know, need the, the antibiotics. Now antibiotics can save a life. You know, yeah. that's why they came up with them because people did die of things. Right. But, um, we have gone so far in the other direction that we are killing our, our gut. We're breathing all of that stuff in too. So we have to think about the effect that it has on our lungs and our lung tissue. So let your kids play in the dirt. Don't be sanitizing everything 24 seven. Um, dirt's okay. Germs are okay. It will actually benefit you in the long run. I love that study. Hey, maybe we could post that study in the um, show notes too. Absolutely. So click yes. on it. So just to recap, guys, and we gave you a ton of stuff, just take it with what works for your family. But the bottom line is this, and this is another thing, before last year, and it was always my biggest frustration, people who sent their kids to school sick. I will tell you, like, if your kid is snotty, if they have a runny, you know, the runny nose, a sore throat, the fever, I know it's got to be hard, especially for working moms and dads, like to have your kids stay home. But here's what happens when you send your kid who's already got an immune system issue going on, obviously running nose, sore throat, and you send them into a pod of germs, which is what schools are, which is okay, but that's what they are. They are so susceptible to catching something else and making that initial, what could have been a simple sore throat much worse because they're going to catch other things. Really and truly, as soon as you start to see your kids feeling sick, go to these things that we've talked about, keep them home, let them get rest, and don't let them go and compromise their immune system any, anymore. And again, I know it's hard. I know it's super, super hard, especially for people who work outside the home. But this is one of those things, if you really want to see a big difference being made, this is where you can do it. You know, just take care of it as soon as you start to see the symptoms. And it's going to go away a lot faster and not get so excessive. Yes, absolutely. Let them rest. Give them that water. Give them their juice plus. Yes. Double up, triple up on their juice plus. Yeah. Um, you know, just rest in fluids. It's the you know the normal the normal thing that we know. And good old grandma's chicken from soup. Other... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Chicken, chicken soup. soup from grandma. It always Bone works. Broth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, I hope that you guys got a ton of information. I know that Stephanie and I could probably talk about this for six, seven hours because we're just so <laughs> passionate about it. Yes. Um, again, reach out to either Stephanie or I on Instagram. Um, we would love to further talk to you, especially if you have something specific that you want to talk about, reach out to us and we'll, we'll help you or direct you to somebody who can help you in any possible way. So thank you guys for being here. Please share this podcast with somebody because I feel like everybody needs to hear it, right? Oh yeah, 100%. Subscribe because that helps us get the word out to more people. And if you really thought Stephanie and I were awesome, leave us a review. We love reviews. So yes. <laughs>